Okay, so I've gone ahead and set up all our tentacles here. I've all, all I did so far was repeat the process. So we get to see an overall look here of how everything's turning out. So like I, like I said, all this stuff is going to be cut off at the end at the bottom here. So I like to frame up my shot here just so I can see what I'm actually going to see when we render this. So you hit play. Alright, so at any point you look at this and say I really want to kind of want these arcs to kind of go faster, they're really smooth, you could just come in here and adjust the speed and the speed will adjust to all of them. So if we up the speed here, we get a little bit of a lag, now the overall shot is those arcs will actually happen much faster. Okay, but I think in my instance I'm going to want to bring this back down. I really like the slow turbulent water. Well, not as turbulent water, sorry. So we'll bring that back down. So how do we light this um, so that only these guys at the bottom get seen but everything else gets rendered? What we need to do is create an Omni Light. So to do that we're going to go up to Create, Lights, Standard Lights, Omni Light. And just like we had for our spheres, we're going to actually put this right up here on one of the faces at the top of the jellyfish. So we'll go to our top view, just align it to this guy, right, move it up in position. It doesn't really matter if we get it all up there, we just, we're just we still going to be constraining it to it. I just want to get them both in the same viewport here. Alright, so we're going to go to, just like we did for the emitters, we're going to constraint, attachment constraint, click on our jellyfish. All right. So I'm just going to scale up our, well actually we get closer if we want, or further away we can see it bigger. Um, go back to frame 0, scroll down, and we can adjust which frame we're going to be on. So we'll just work our way up, let's get closer to the top here. It looks like we got to the inside, and right up here is going to get pretty close. Let's see if we can get something a little bit closer. Okay, right there, and you're allowed to offset this stuff a little bit. Let me just bring it in so we have it almost dead center. Alright, so back under the uh, modify panel for this, we're going to go down to let's see, intensity, color, and attenuation, and we're going to set up our far attenuation. And wherever this uh, small sphere is, this is what's going to be the, the pure color of the light, and the gradient starts from where that sphere ends to where this sphere starts. So we need to bring down our our end here all the way down and we'll just adjust our start as this gets bigger you'll see it grow and we just need to adjust this to where we want our tails to end so I'm gonna to go to something right about there right where we start to get to see some good fluid motion out of the out of the tails but not enough to see that oh yeah it's starting to break up okay so what's happening here is as our jellyfish moves up our emitter is actually going to move up with it and we're not going to want to do that because our tail is actually going to get smaller or our tentacles will get smaller so like I said because we did everything with a cycle the only pose we need to change is this one so we're just going to come back set auto key on go to that frame and it looks like all of our guys here open up our FD modifiers select control points just grab these guys here and we're going to move them down a little bit laggy at this point. Okay, so let's come back and see if the light changes that much at this point. Still a bit. But it doesn't matter how much we move that, it's actually going to go up a little bit. So like I said at the start of the tutorial, it's not the most robust way to do it, but hopefully just as when it goes up, those pull out far enough to actually compensate for how small that's going to get. See, we get that ripple, well that would kind of compensate for that, so that should work out well. It won't look like they're getting longer or shorter there for us. It's also good to check other views, you can kind of miss out on the fact that, you know, we're getting a lot of more control, we're kind of looking at it from this angle but the gravity is actually doing it from all the different angles here. So if you want, uh, we can also animate the rotation in uh, X for this. So as we rotate, as this rotates around 
the legs will go from different angles. But as you can see, if we check it just from one angle, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to see it going in different angles. So we will probably watch this whole animation from this viewport opposed to watching it from here. But if you want to get maybe half and half, we can just turn to the side. We'll get a little bit more of the wave. But it's all a matter of where we place our camera at the end of the day. So, But if you were going to do an animation rotating around your jellyfish, it would be a good idea just to plug a noise modifier or control array right into the X rotation of this gravity, much like we did for the strength. Okay, so at this point we need to get a dummy object to move with this jellyfish and he'll move over time. So we're going to add in a bunch of frames here, probably about 600 frames. Alright, we're going to create a dummy object or helper object. Take this up a little bit. We're going to link this to our jellyfish it up a little bit. And all we have to do is just link our jellyfish to this dummy object. So the jellyfish is now the child of that. All right, so wherever we animate this guy, jellyfish is going to follow. So give it a second, we get a delay. If we move the timeline, those guys, the uh, emitters would update. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn off our tentacles for now while we get the animation working. So over in our particle view, I'm just going to right click on particle flow source and just turn this off. And that will turn off all the tentacles. So, All right, so we're going to select our dummy object and between 0 and 600, let's just say we move our jellyfish up to about here, 600 frames. All right. So let's turn from our side here rotate the object a little bit, kind of see what we'll see at the end here. Okay, so it's kind of moving constant over time, that's not going to work for us. So we know that we can find the keyframes for this guy by just clicking on them. Now these keys that we see down here, these are actually the poses for our jellyfish. So we know from, let's just animate from here to here, we'll delete this guy. Actually we'll go to where this guy is here, this frame. We're going to click on our dummy object and that's how far we want to move since we know how far we want to move during the whole span. So now we can delete our last key and now we just need to animate how he actually gets to this point. So from here to here he shouldn't be moving much at all. So we'll select our jellyfish, find out where that point is. This is the point in which he's going to speed up. So we're just going to set a key here and we're actually going to bring it back, or forward sorry. Actually, so what we're going to want to do is bring this key here and bring that forward to that point. So he's very subtly moving. Then all of a sudden he's going to pick up to, let's say, a few frames before he starts to kind of come back in on himself. So maybe about here. So we'll hit key. So now we know where to bring it. And we're actually going to come to about here, this key a little bit and we'll bring that key right on top of the other one. So what I did is I kind of use these as reference points of where I need to drag keys and I just grab keys from further on to bring them to kind of like have them get to that point quicker. So if we watch this, very slow, we'll speed up and then slow right back down. Now I know he stopped here, but what we're going to do is cycle this with an offset so it will co continuously keep moving. So we're going to go into our curve editor of our helper object. Set this up. All right, and we're worried about our positions only. So it looks like we're only going to have to worry about our Z position here. So we're only moving up in space. So try and get this even out here for us. So what I'm doing here is trying to cropping this up. I'm using the middle mouse wheel to roll in and out. And if I hold shift, I can adjust whether or not it's stretched vertically or sideways. So in this case, we're going to want to squash it down a little bit to see what's going on. And we're going to select all our keys. 
and we're going to go controller, out of range types, relative repeat, much like we did with the control points for our modifier. All right, so we can see over time what's happening. So right here, things are going pretty slow. We're easing out of that point, which is actually not what we want to do. We actually want to get this point just to be consistent. So we'll have to adjust the key up at the top there. But we kind of want this point just to stay consistent speed. And we'll slow down right to about here. As you can see, it's getting slower. But we want to come out of that point consistently. And then all of a sudden, we speed up. If you want, you can break that if you want to kind of show a bit of a pop there for the speed. Uh, select your tangent, hold shift, and that will break the key for you. And you can come out of it like almost a hard point, but we're going to just a little bit softer than what we had, or harder than we had. So come up, he's animating really fast, and then once his momentum stops, he's going to slow back down. And we'll actually come out of that key smoothly. So it slows down and stays at a constant speed. This will kind of point at this. Alright. And we need this point here to be pretty smooth, so if we move that up, we can kind of get that set up for us. down, point it back up. In order to adjust this one here, we're going to need to adjust this one at the bottom. So we can adjust. I'm kind of watching up here in the top right hand corner while I'm adjusting this one. So it looks like that's going to work for us, but I don't want it to speed up. I want it to slow down. Bring this up. Alright, so let's see how that looks. Slow, speeds up, loses its momentum. Slow, speeds up. So what's happening is it's losing too much momentum. Like it doesn't stay constant until he gets that pose where he's about to stretch and grab some more water. Okay, so this part worked out fine, but this one's not. Once he hits that point, he's kind of stopping. We don't want that. We want him to keep going. So to do that, we're going to adjust this key here. And then we kind of keep this momentum going. See what that does for us. There we go. Perfect. All right, so next thing we need to do is we'll rotate our camera back to our position. So I'm clicking on this orbit tool and I'm getting this increment snaps because I have uh, angle snap toggle on here. All right. So now our character is just moving up in Y. Our tentacles are there, just not turned on. We just need to make the interior tentacles 